Welcome back. In this video, we're going to derive the equations of motion for the elastic pendulum, and then we're going to create the animation of the elastic pendulum shown on the screen now. As always, I'm Logan, and I hope you learned something new. Let's get started. The elastic pendulum is simply a spring mass system, which is allowed to pivot at the origin, which is highlighted by my orange cursor right now. The spring has a spring constant of k, the mass is m, and the length of the spring when it's not stretched is l0. This would be the length of the spring with no forces acting on it, such as gravity. So if we took the spring and we put it onto a table and measured it, that would be L0. When the string stretches, it's going to increase or decrease by a distance of L. So the total length of the spring is now L0 plus L. Lastly, we can rotate about the origin by theta in radians. Now let's go ahead and derive the equations of motion using Lagrangian mechanics. Let's start with the kinetic energy of a system. Because all of the mass of the system is concentrated at one point, the kinetic energy is simply one half of mv squared, where v squared is simply x dot squared plus y dot squared. And we can read off x and y from the figure. By placing the origin where my mouse cursor is, we see that x is just going to be the length of the spring times the sine of theta, and y is going to be the length of the spring times the cosine. And we have to use the minus because the y axis is going up, and this is obviously down. Now when we take derivatives of, of x and derivatives of y, we have to be careful because l is a function of time, and theta is also a function of time. So for example, with x dot, we use the product rule. So we have the, the derivative of the first term, which is l dot, times the second term, sine theta, plus the first term times the derivative of the second. And here we have to apply the chain rule because, of course, theta is also a function of time. Same thing with y dot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to square both equations and add them up. And using the identity sine squared plus cosine squared equal to 1, we end up with this really nice expression, which we can plug back into the total kinetic energy of the system. Now we're halfway done. We just need to do the potential energy. The potential energy of the system is simply going to be the potential energy of the spring plus the potential energy of the mass. So we know that the height is simply the y coordinate and we have an expression for y. So just plugging that in, we have an expression for the potential energy. So now we'll just formulate the Lagrangian, which is just t minus v, and we'll plug into the other Lagrange equations. You notice we have two equations because we have two generalized coordinates. We have l and we have theta. So we can represent any configuration of a system using l and theta as, as well as l dot and theta dot. So now you could solve these by hand. It's not very difficult, but it's a little bit tedious. So I'm going to show you guys how to use Python to solve these Euler Lagrange equations. So now let's head over to VS Code. Okay, now I'm in Visual Studio and I'm going to open up a new file. So let's just go new file and I'm going to hit Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys just to make it easy to see. And I'm going to save this as um, derivation. All right, let's get started. So we're going to start by doing some simple imports. We're going to import SymPy, and then we're going to in initialize as vprinting. This just makes it really, really beautiful equations. So let's add a new code block. And first, what we're going to do is we're going to define our symbolic variables. So m, g, k. L naught and time are our symbols. Uh, then theta and L, these are functions of time. So we're going to use the dynamic symbols. Now we're going to take some time derivatives. This just makes it easier to write down equations later. So we'll paste that in there. All right, looking good. Now we're going to go ahead and define T, V, and then write down the Lagrangian. Boom, just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and solve the Euler-Lagrange equations. So you'll see how easy this is in SymPy. We simply write down the first Euler-Lagrange equation, and we write down the second one. And then we're just going to hit solve. So we'll solve the first one for theta double dot, solve the second one for L double dot. And I'm going to actually write this down in a state space format. This just is when we have an expression such as x dot equal f of x. So if I run this, you'll see the state space equation jump right out of the page. So you see right here, we have all of our state variables. And then here we have 
an expression, which represents the dynamics. So now I'm going to do one more quick thing. I'm going to make a new code block. And instead of taking a screenshot of this and then writing it down later, I'm actually going to just loop over this in Python and write down some text. So this is going to be useful in about one minute. Let's run this and we see we have now expressions which I can just go ahead and copy and paste and I can put them in later. So, okay, let's go on to the next file. Going to double click, make a new file, um, and let's save this guy as animate.ipy notebook. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is first we're going to simulate the Spring Math system. So we'll get started by doing some basic imports and we'll also define some constants. We have the gravity, we have the spring constant, we have the mass, and then we also have the resting length of the spring. Awesome. We'll want some initial conditions as well. So this is how the system will start. We're gonna start with an initial theta equal to 15 degrees, theta dot equal to zero. L is going to be um, 0 0.25, so 25% bigger than normal, and L dot is going to be zero. Awesome. Now we're going to define the ODE. So I'm just going to paste this guy in. And you'll notice that these expressions right here is what we calculated in the derivation.ipy notebook. So right here, you just take these, you copy and paste them straight into here. It's super easy. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of is you need to make sure that you type um, numpy dot uh, and numpy dot right here because sine and cosine are not defined. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and solve our initial value problem. And then we'll grab the results, which are going to be, of course, just theta and L in our time. And then we can actually make a, a really, really simple plot. So I'll go ahead and plot that. And now I'll hit run. And you see, here we go. So you see that the pendulum, it starts on to the right, and then it's going to start swinging to the left. This is gonna, this zero right here, of course, is going to be at the bottom, so it's going to swing to the left, go back to the right, left, right, left, right, left, right. That makes sense. And we see that the total length is going up and then down and then up and then down and up and down. And you see right in the middle, this is where the spring is at rest, so to say, um, with the effects of gravity. So L naught, of course, is going to be right down here. Um, but the total length of the spring is going to be 1 plus this orange value. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. So now we're going to go ahead and animate exactly one frame at a time. So we'll get started by doing some import statements. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit code and paste this guy in. So we have numpy, we have matplotlib, um, and then we have a couple other helper functions. So I'll make a new figure. Uh, then I'm going to generate a spring. So this one's a little bit confusing if you haven't seen it before, um, but I sort of went over this in my last video with the affine transforms. Basically, what we're doing is we're defining our spring as a series of lines. And so we want the lines to start at the origin, and they're going to go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, down, just like that. And they're going to be expressed in this nice array with all the x coordinates up here and all the y coordinates down here. Of course, all of this code is going to be in the description on my GitHub channel, so don't worry about that. Now we're going to go ahead and just get some initial conditions. So theta will define to be 15 degrees, L 0 0.25. You can make these really whatever you want. L naught is going to be 1. Just be sure that you don't make L too big, otherwise you're going to have to change your axes. So now we can go ahead and grab the mass position. So the mass position is going to be the spring length times the sine, and the y is going to be the minus spring length times cosine, just as we saw when we did the derivations. And we're going to put a circle um, just at the center of that. So at px, py, it's going to have a radius of 0.1, and we're going to make it blue, and we're going to draw it on top of the spring. So that's why the z order is 3. So now for the spring, again, I recommend you go watch the affine transform video um, just to understand this line of code right here. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take the spring and we're going to stretch and rotate it. And we can do this with these nice affine transforms. Okay, 
So yeah, this is the spring data right here. Uh, then we're going to multiply it by A to transform it. And so our spring is just going to be a bunch of lines. Um, and of course we have all the X's there and we have all the Y's there. So this just generates a bunch of lines. So perfect. Now all we have to do is go to plot, save fig. And when we run this, we have this beautiful still frame. Okay, so this is great. Um, now we're able to to draw the spring and we can draw the mass um, wherever we want. Remember, all we needed was to define theta and define L and of course L naught. And given that, we can draw the spring in any configuration we want. So if we remember, if we go back to this animation, we have L and we have theta as a function of time. So what we can do now is loop over every value of time and then make an animation. So for, so for every single value of time, we'll put it into a frame and then we can turn that into a GIF. Okay, so now we're going to go and make one more code block and I'm going to input one more thing. I'm going to input this animation. So this is what's going to allow us to create a GIF file. Okay, so I'm going to re-grab the output of the solver. Then I'm going to create a new figure. Then we're going to go ahead, um, we're going to set the length of the, sp of the spring. And we'll go ahead and steal some code from above. So what we're doing here is we're just defining um, the spring initially. Uh, then we're going to also define the circle and we're just going to add them to our figure. So we're going to now go and make an, a new animation function which for every frame will go and it will animate the spring. So it's just going to go ahead and it's going to move the mass and move the spring to where we want it. So these locations don't really matter at all. Um, so you see this animate function, this I is going to range from zero to a couple hundred for every frame number and the, so the spring length is just going to be L plus the current spring length. Then we know what the coordinates of the mass are and so we can set the circles center and for the spring we're simply going to do our refine transform then we're going to transform the spring and we're going to set the X and the Y data. Then the last thing to do is just call this animation function. So this one's pretty easy we're just going to call this funct animation and we're going to give it the figure. We're going to give it this animation function and we're going to tell it how many frames to go for. So we're going to go for every single frame in T. Then we're going to tell it to do 30 frames per second and save it to this .gif file. So I'll do that. I'll run this and this normally takes a few seconds to run. It, it does have to, to do a lot and it has to save a figure. So let's just let this guy run. And of course, all this code is going to be in the description below. We see we have a nice static image. And if I go over here on the left and I click on the .gif file, you see VS Code does a great job at rendering this for us. So you can go ahead, take this file, upload it to Twitter, do whatever you want to do, and, and just have fun. Um, so that concludes this video. In the next video, we're going to get a little bit interesting and move into something called the Capitza Pendulum. So it should be exciting. Hope to see you then. Bye.